Hey, clubsters. Oh, hubsters. <laughs> How are we going today? Uh, I thought I would come in here today and share with you a bit of a story from uh, going up a mountain in Japan last week. Uh, we are in, I'm in full uh, getting ready mode for the two retreats that I'm running coming up. One is in Vanuatu next week. We're doing some volunteering and mastermind of my mentees are coming along and we're going to have an amazing time there and i'm also in um tweak mode for our bali retreat with the clubsters that uh our group mentoring uh has come to a close at the end of this next month and we finish it off with a retreat so i'm in a creative mode to uh, get all of that done but last week I was in Japan and I was walking to the top of a mountain. And on the top of that mountain, I'm going to share with you a picture. On the top of that mountain, I had this amazing moment. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. should be able to. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a fire that has been burning for over uh, 1,200 years. 1,200 years. How amazing is that? And uh, the pot that's sitting on top there, of there, the water that's in there is renowned for its healing properties. So I didn't know that this um, amazing fire that was burning for over 1,200 years uh, was even there. And I got uh, to experience it because of a bit of a journey and I wanted to talk to you guys about it today. So uh, my hubby and I, we were pretty active and uh, we were in Japan doing this, these wonderful, amazing things because we hadn't been in Japan before. We don't really have a lot of downtime. And uh, we were walking up the hill, walking up this mountain and I was considering um, the whole experience as a little bit of a drain because I had walked through 36,000 gates the day before and this particular day I decided we decided we would go and walk around this really small island we got to this island and it's like massive huge 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 island and uh, I was walking slowly up and then we got to these cable cars I thought awesome cable cars quick way up awesome and then we got to the next one and then we went oh, okay there's two cable cars this is exciting and then we'll be on the top and it'll all be finished and it'll be fantastic and so as we were going up to the top uh, and the cable cars I had it in my mind that it was just we were going to get there fast and we were going to get it done got up to the top and there was this uh, platform and then there was a, a sign saying you have to walk another 45 minutes to get to the top and by this time my legs were struggling everything was all, all a bit rough and uh, I didn't know what was at the top and the interesting thing about it is that uh, I looked like this at the time <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that this is me about 50 meters from the top I had had enough. I was so tired. My legs were like burning. Everything was cramping. It was hotter than anywhere that we'd been in Japan. And I sat down. And my gorgeous husband turned around and said, well, you could either sit here right now and, um, you know, you get to see this, but we don't even know what it's like to be up the top. And I was like, no, but I've walked all this way and I've walked all these other things. I've done so much in the past two days. I don't really want to do that. This is as far as I need to go. I've seen this shrine, this shrine, this shrine. I don't need to go. And he said, well, okay, but you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know what's up there. I was like, mm, yeah, I suppose so. But right now I don't think I really need to know. Anyway, I had this moment of, okay, the pressure's on. Do I just, am I okay with the choice that I'm going to make or could I give it that last little 10%? So I've gone 90%. What could last 10% look like? And so I got, got up still with that face on and whinged the whole way. But then I got to the top and I had never seen a 1,200-year-old fire. 
have you seen a 1,200 year old fire? I hadn't and I went in there and experienced a really amazing sensation and then this little monk all dressed in black came out, stoked the fire, went back in again. This amazing moment of reverence for uh, the first person who did that, the first person that walked up that hill who didn't see everybody else who was walking past and wondering, oh, well, they've all walked past. I might be able to do that myself. So I was walking up there and I got to experience something I'd never experienced before. I'd got to have a moment I'd never experienced before and possibly won't again. Like, it was profound and I wrote on a candle and I, and I set a light and intention to not forget that moment, to not forget that with the last 50 metres, you don't have to give up. That might actually be the start of something new. So um, if you're just joining, please let me know that you're here. <laughs> um, so on the journey that I had up the hill and then saw a 1,200-year-old fire um, that I would never have experienced had I not given the, my last 10% in, um, in that last 50 metres, I realised the way I do one thing is the way I do everything. And it's the same with all of us. Often I'll give my 90% and in the last 10% I will drop the bundle. I will be happy enough because it's bigger than I've ever done before. But if I go that last 50 metres, if I turn that into the start instead of the end, what happens then? And uh, I was reading a Kundalini Yoga book and it said, when the pressure is on, start and the pressure will be off. And that with my experience up the mountain got me to thinking about being in business and particularly Pracky's being in business, right? Hi, Jeanette. And um, Pracky's being in business, often enough we go, oh, but I've, I've already done all of the social media stuff and I've done a blog post and I've done this other stuff and now they want this GDPR stuff and now we've got to do these legals to do with it and I've got to see my clients and I've got to do all the follow-ups and I've got to do all this other stuff and the pressure starts to be on. And then th random events start happening like um, my son broke his arm in two places yesterday and it's like, Oh, I've got that pressure as well, that pressure as well. And under all that pressure, it's very, very easy to literally just give up. And uh, sometimes that's what you need, to surrender into that moment. And then start. And that starting might turn into having a conversation with somebody for help. It might be starting to have a conversation about the concerns and the stresses you're under. Um, and, and that's what it was with my hubby as well. It might be the um, start is to take the next step. Start might be to pay that bill, to ask that person to, it, it could be all sorts of things. Where's the pressure on for you right now? So I can see Jeanette and somebody else is watching. Where's the pressure on for you right now? Where do you feel it? So at the moment um, I'm... Uh, tweaking all our legals on uh, the Tammy Guests and Natrepreneur Club website because uh, these new uh, global kind of data protection laws are coming in. And uh, that, that pressure, it's very easy to just read and consume all the information to do with that, but it's another thing to actually start with it, start whatever that happens to be. Where are you guys feeling the pressure at the moment in your businesses? Um, other things that you might feel pressure on is getting back to clients. You might feel pressure with um, getting clients through the door. You might feel pressure with all of the things, you know. There's social media and the get, getting your newsletter up and doing your blog post and um, all of the things. Where that pressure happens to be, where can you, instead of thinking I've done it all and, and I, I've that I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Where can you start? What can it look like if you were to start a conversation? What would it look like if you were to start um, doing whatever you were doing? Um, so that's my big one today. It's really easy to sit and go, yeah, I know, that's a nice idea, but it's another thing to actually 
begin and do. And for me walking up that hill, I didn't know that I, what I would see on the other side. I didn't know walking up that amazing mountain that I would see, like I never even conceived of there being a fire that has been burning for 1,200 years. And on the other side of whatever you have pressure on at the moment, you can't even conceive of what might be on the other side for you unless you take that first step and start something. Hey, Julia, nice to see you. Jeanette, uh, I've got a talk at a health and wellbeing event this Saturday and then a new complex client directly after. Yeah. And isn't it funny because it would be easy if we just had talks as our thing. But often as prackies, we've got um, our group work, we've got our individual work, and of those, there's easy cases and there's complex cases, and then we've got our business side of things, and then we've got our follow-ups, and then we've got our legals, and then we've got our financials, and the pressure can easily build up. So where can you, instead of looking at all like that and going, oh, this is the biggest I've ever been before, or this is the um, the the furthest I've ever been before in my business, instead of thinking like that, just the same as I did up on top of the hill, this is the furthest I've ever gone up on this hill before, this is the furthest I've ever been in a shrine before, where can we just drop that into the moment and go, okay, where can I start? So uh, Jeanette says, I start plenty of conversations. It's getting the person to book that I have trouble with. Excellent. Uh, so starting plenty of conversations, so a conversation um, to book somebody in or invite them to book in is a very different conversation to starting a conversation, right? Uh, so if the pressure that you have at the moment, uh, Jeanette, is around booking people in on the back end of your well-being event, what would a conversation look like where they need to come and see you? Um, that you... Uh, create a moment for them to understand where their health is actually at and that they have to do something about it for it to change uh, rather than just starting up a conversation about their health <laughs> um, and the complex case as well where can you begin with that um, I think you've done the Vite Mosaic where can you begin with that where can it, you start with that so that some of the pressure is off going into that? It's really easy, especially for those of you who have either weekend consults or one of those massive day consults. I used to have um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on a Thursday, and I'd look down the barrel of that and just, oh, pressure, because there was just so many working parts in there. So as soon as I created the... Um, a flow of what was happening in my consults as soon as I created automatic email responses as soon as I created all these other bits and pieces to go with it to support that that starting was so much easier because it was it had already started before it began Emily uh, we are working with the I am enough in mindful mamas at the moment and saying this is helping me drop in and keep going I totally get that yeah I am enough right now. I love that. Cool. Um, yeah, so what is it that you feel pressure right now? And could it be as simple as an affirmation? Could it be as simple? And even then, sometimes, you know, sometimes an affirmation is too much. I've got a mindfulness app on my phone, and it's always my intention to do it seven times a week. And every week, I do it three to four times a week. and um, the, because it tracks it, it tells me how many days that I do my meditation. And some days I totally get it. Even if it's a 10 minute meditation, it seems just amazingly hard to do. And I mean, it's really easy for us to sit in the practitioner zone and tell our clients to do that, but it's an entirely different thing to turn the mirror on ourselves and see that we can do that. So sitting there with okay, all I need to do is an affirmation. All I needed to do to get to the top of that hill was 50 more steps, 50 more meters. All I need to do is it's, it changes the way you think about it when you think about it as a start. Okay, this next moment is a start and the pressure comes off. This moment right now I can start a, a affirmation. This moment now I can start 
the med meditation. It's literally a button on the phone. Same with you guys who are um, getting more visible in your businesses and doing lives on your business page. All you have to do is start. Um, the same thing goes for you guys who are, are wondering what, what to do next in your business. All you have to do is take that first step. Sometimes it's pressing the button, pressing the, um, the go live, pressing the um, compose the email or send the email. Maybe it's writing that blog post or whatever it happens to be. How can you just start and the pressure changes? It's really easy to get this on a mental level. Honestly, you're all going to sit there and go, yeah, yeah, I know. I've been in that situation before. I'm going to apply it to these things that I know. I'm going to put it to what, what's going on with me right now. Thinking, thinking, thinking. It's a whole different thing to actually put pen to paper, put fingers to your um, keyboard to press the go live button, whatever it happens to be. So don't just sit here and smile and nod. Whatever you can do today to stop with the pressure, relax, let it go, and then start, do that now. Uh, Jeanette says, yes, starting um, with her most pressing issue, which is insomnia, and then working towards other issues um, in another appointment. Beautiful. I like that. Prioritizing. Uh, Emily, it's reminding me of when you transition into labor and all you want to do is give up and scream for an epidural and then you are only moments away from meeting your baby. Completely, that transition uh, in labor is, the, is one of the best analogies for it. Uh, it's that moment where you just go, get stuffed, I'm going home. And I had that exact moment on the, on the hillside, on the mountainside, up that hill in Japan. Get stuffed, honey. I'm going home. And he was like, hmm, but what might be there? What might be on the other side? And in labor, it's the most incredible little human being that you've ever met in your life that happens to have come. Uh, and for me on the hill, it was, you know, 1,200 year old. Um, yeah, uh, fire. For me in business, um, when I have gone, oh, get stuffed, I'm going home, uh, one of the big ones was, uh, when I was first starting out retreats and I had um, all these people, so many people were saying that they wanted to come on a retreat and, uh, but they didn't want to go overseas. And so I, um, I decided I would run some in, in Australia and I set out this, this retreat and it was, um, it was at the right time for all these people and all this stuff and two people booked in. And I, in that moment, was like, get stuffed. I'm never going to do retreats again. Going home, right? You get these moments in business where you're just like, no. Nah. And then only, so, and I could have, I could have given up right then. I could have gone, no retreats forever, no. Um, whereas retreats make me come alive. There is an absolute incredible divine flow that comes out of being in retreats. So I'm very grateful that I didn't. But in that moment, get stuffed gone home. Only three months later, I had a retreat with the most amount of people that we'd had again overseas. Uh, and now we're running retreats for over 20 people at a time, four times a year. So um, yeah, it's an incredible thing. And I couldn't have imagined that back at the time where I just wanted to give it all away and the pressure was too much. And I felt like all of these things. And in those moments where you're just like, Wah! if you just drop into it, and start something. So what's your next, what's the start? Is it an email? Is it a conversation? Is it typing your first sentence of your book? Is it the pressing the go live button? Whatever it happens to be, start. And all of a sudden the pressure comes off. A layer of the pressure comes off. Often we talk about this in um, the Naturepreneur Club and we talk about closing loops and when we're exhausted and when we feel pressure, there's, it's often because we've got open conversations or open loops of conversations. In it. An email gone out to somebody or an email's come to you and you haven't closed the circle of communication there. Uh, you might have um, started something and you haven't quite completed it. You might have started something, you haven't got the feedback on it. You might have, uh, the, a bill might have come towards you and you haven't paid it. There's all these open loops. And when we can start to close those loops, then art flow starts to happen. And so what could you start to do today? 
where all of that pressure of all of those things, all of those open loops around actually calms back down because you start to close the loops and then it all comes back around in a circle to you. All right, uh, that's it for today. I just wanted to share a little bit of um, what's been happening, what's coming up and um, if you are feeling pressure, what can you start? What can you start today uh, that you haven't completed on? Um, what can you start that you haven't started before? And I'd love to hear it over here in the hub. Uh, if you are in uh, any of the capital cities, we've got the Revolution series coming up and I would love to meet you in person and see what you're starting and creating. Uh, so the link is uh, in the comment section. And I will catch you guys on the next vid for Training Thursday next week. And um, yeah, we'll be coming to you live from Vanuatu uh, at the Mastermind uh, getaway that we've got for our Natrepreneur Mastermind. All right, I will catch you guys later. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day.